In this Blender video, I'll be demonstrating how to make this image of a spaceship, and I'll be showing you a quick method for creating its basic shape. During the video, I'll be using some features that were added to Blender in version 2.79, so make sure that you have that version or newer before starting the project. I'll be using Blender version 2.79. Let's start by creating a new project. So from the File menu, select New, and then click on Reload Startup File. To make it easier to see the scale and location of the objects that we'll be adding, switch from perspective to orthographic view by pressing 5 on the number pad. Now delete the cube by right clicking on it to make sure that it's selected and then press X. Next we're going to add some text and then we'll convert it into the shape of the spaceship. We'll start by centering the 3D cursor in case it moved. So press Shift S and select Cursor to Center. Then press Shift A and add some text. Now press Tab for edit mode, then delete the current text and type a capital B followed by 10 lowercase i letters. Then press Tab to return to object mode. Now switch to the object data panel and set the extrude value to 0.05. Then set the bevel depth value to 0 0.02 and set the resolution to 2. Next we're going to add a cast modifier which will give us the basic shape of the spaceship. So switch to the object modifiers panel and add a cast modifier. Set the factor value to 0.8. It's currently on its side and facing backwards so let's rotate it a couple of times. We'll start by rotating it on the Y axis, so press R, then Y, then minus 90, then Enter. Then rotate it on the Z axis by pressing R, then Z, then 180, then Enter. Next we're going to scale it a couple of times to change its proportions. So scale it on the Y axis by pressing S, then Y, then 2, then Enter. Then scale it on the x-axis by pressing S, then X, then 2.5, then Enter. Now press 3 on the number pad for right side view. Then press R to rotate and rotate it until the bottom is level. This is what it looks like so far. Next we're going to extend the nose of the spaceship. But before we can do this, we need to convert it into a mesh so that we can change its geometry in edit mode. So press Alt-C and select Mesh from Curve Meta Surf Text. Now press Tab for edit mode. Then click the Face Select button so that we can select only faces. Now right click the face on the nose of the spaceship to select it. Then extrude it on the Y axis by pressing E then Y, then minus 0.8, then Enter. Then scale it by pressing S, then 0, then Enter. Now press 3 on the number pad for right side view. Then drag the tip of the nose down until it's even with the bottom of the spaceship. Now press Tab to switch to object mode. This is what it looks like now. Next we're going to use a wireframe modifier to add more detail to the spaceship. So add a wireframe modifier. To get rid of the spikes, remove the check mark that's next to even thickness. Then remove the check mark that's next to replace original so that we can see the original spaceship. Now set the thickness to 0 0.01. Next we're going to use a subdivision surface modifier to add even more detail. So add a subdivision surface modifier and set the view and render values to 1. We don't want to round the edges, we just want to add more detail. So change the subdivision type to simple. Then click the up triangle to move this modifier up above the wireframe modifier. This will allow the wireframe modifier to use the additional subdivision geometry. Now click the Smooth button. Now let's set up the materials for the spaceship. So switch to the Material panel. Then click the New button. 
Then come up here and change this from Blender Render to Cycles Render. Now click the Use Nodes button. Set the surface type to the principled shader. Then set the base color to a hex value of 959595. This is going to be a metal material, so set the metallic value to 1. Then set the roughness value to 0.5. Next we're going to add some other colors to the spaceship in various places. So press Tab for edit mode. Make sure that the Face Select button is still selected. Then hold down the Alt key and right click the center of this edge to select all of these faces. Then hold down both the Shift and Alt keys and right click the center of this edge to add these faces to the selection. We're going to change the color of the selected faces to a red color. So click this plus button to add another material. Then click the new button and set the surface type to the principled shader. Set the base color to a hex value of C30300. This is going to be a metal material, so set the metallic value to 1. Then set the roughness value to 0.5. Now click the Assign button so that the color will be applied to the selected faces. We're going to change more of the faces to the red color, so hold down the Alt key and right click this face to select all of these faces. Then hold down both the Shift and Alt keys and right click all of these faces to add them to the selection. Then make sure that the red material is still selected, and then click the Assign button. Now if I press A to deselect everything, and then switch to Material View, we can get a rough idea of what the materials will look like. I'll switch back to Solid View now. Next we're going to add a black color to some of the faces. So right click this face to select it. Then hold down the shift key and right click this face to add it to the selection. Then press B for border select and add these faces to the selection. Now click this plus button to add another material. Then click the new button and set the surface type to the principled shader. Set the base color to black. This is going to be another metal material, so set the metallic value to 1. Then set the roughness value to 0.5. Now click the Assign button. We're going to change more of the faces to a black color, so hold down the Alt key and right click the center of this edge to select these faces. Then hold down both the Shift and Alt keys and right click the center of this edge to add these faces to the selection. Make sure that the black material is still selected and then click the Assign button. We're done setting up the materials, so press Tab to switch back to Object Mode. Now I'll switch to Material View so that we can get a rough idea of what the materials will look like. I'll switch back to Solid View now. Now is a good time to save what I have so far. I'm going to name it Spaceship.Blend. Next, let's set up the lighting. So press 7 on the number pad for top view. Now right click the lamp to select it. Then press G to move and drag it until it's even with the back of the spaceship at the center and then left click. Now switch to the Object Data panel if it's not already selected. Make sure that the Points lamp is selected and set the size to 1. Then click the Use Nodes button. 
We're going to make the color a little off-white, so set the color to a hex value of FF F1 E7. Then set the strength to 5000. Now we're going to add a second light source. So duplicate the lamp and drag it on the Y axis by pressing Shift D, then Y, then drag it down until it's about two large grid divisions below the tip of the spaceship, and then left click. Then move it to the right by three large grid divisions. Now press 3 on the number pad for right side view. Drag the lamp down to the green center line. Then set the strength to 100. Next we'll set up the camera view. So press 0 on the number pad for camera view. This is the view looking through the camera. I'll zoom in a little. Now I'm going to lock the camera to the view. To do that, press N to open the Properties panel and put a check mark next to Lock Camera to View. Then press N again to close the Properties panel. Now I can zoom, pan, and rotate while looking through the camera. Now we're going to add an environment texture to use for the background. So switch to the World panel. Then click the Use Nodes button. Then click the small button next to the color selection and select Environment Texture. I'm going to be using this image for the background. You can find a link to it in the video description. To select an image, click the Open button, navigate to the image, and select it. I'll switch to Rendered View so that we can see what the background image looks like through the camera. I want the image to be darker, so I'm going to set the strength to 0.25. We're going to set this up to display a larger portion of the background, which will make the background look more detailed. We can do this by changing the focal length of the camera. So go to the Outliner and select the camera. Then switch to the Object Data panel. Set the focal length to 18. I'm going to switch back to solid view mode. Next I'll set up the view that I'd like to use. I'll switch to rendered view to see what this looks like. Everything looks good, so we're ready to set this up for the final render. So switch to the Render panel. Set the resolution to 100%. Now open the Sampling section. This is where you can set the number of render samples. The larger this value is, the better the final image will look, but the longer it will take to render. I'm going to set it to 500. Now switch to the Render Layers panel and add a check mark next to Denoising. This is a new feature that was added to Blender in version 2.79 and it can help reduce image noise in the final render. Now I'm going to save the project. It's a good idea to do this before rendering in case something goes wrong during the rendering process. Now we'll render the image. So from the Render menu, I'll select Render Image. If you want to stop the rendering process before it's done, you can press the Escape key or you can click the X next to the Render Progress bar. This is going to take a few minutes to render, so I'll pause the video until it's done. Rendering is finished and this is the final image. To save the image, go to the Image menu and select Save as Image, or you can press F3. I'm going to name this image Spaceship.png. If you want to return to the 3D view, then click this menu and select 3D view. To go back to the rendered image, click the menu and select UV Image Editor. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.